Hello. This is um, in the heart of the park, and Dorothy Graydon and I are putting together a little video to share with you her up and coming show, which is going to happen at the depot in Beverly Shores at 525 Broadway, opening on July 9th with the grand opening from five to seven. So we hope you'll all come see us. But in the meantime, at this wonderful event, we are going to prepare you a little bit so that Dorothy can tell you about what to expect and what to look forward to and how she works when she works with her art. So Dorothy, how did you ever get into this? What intrigued you so much? Well, it, I guess it started quite a long time ago. My sister lives in uh, New Mexico. And every summer I would go and visit with her, with my daughter. And she'd always plan these, these amazing trips out into the wilderness. Uh -huh. And we, we, uh, we originally started looking at um, the ancient homes of the ancient people that lived you know, uh, 2,000, 3,000 years ago. But then I started to notice the carvings and the paintings that were on the canyon walls near yeah. near the homes. And uh, I just became really interested in them because they're, they say so much. I mean, they're, no, nobody really knows exactly what they say, but they, they're, they're, they think that they're storytelling or they're um, preparing for uh, celebrations or they're celebrating births. They're, uh, they're recording their daily chores, uh, recording their hunting scenes. I could go on and on with that, but um, I, I just became totally fascinated with them. And I really didn't do anything with them for a long time, except I was doing a lot of collage work and I'd incorporate some of the ancient things into, into my collage work. But then one summer I went to Wyoming to the uh, Wind, Wind River Valley area. Uh -huh. And they have these carvings, these petroglyphs there that are really scary <laughs> um and they just pulled me in because there's they, they just they say so much and they're so deep and they just pulled me in and when i got i took hundreds of pictures and which is i actually i have thousands of pictures of petroglyphs and <laughs> pictographs but these particular ones i went but when i came home i said you know i've got to start drawing these i just have to draw them and um so I started drawing them kind of small, you know, but even though some of them are bigger than life size right. in, on the rocks. And I was showing them to my friend Edwin Sheldon, Shelton. <laughs> <laughs> and he looked at him and he said, oh my gosh, go big, go big, go big, because he loves to go big, right? So um, I started drawing them in uh, like 35 by 22 size papers, just with ink and um, just with India ink on white paper. And then I had friends that started to say, well, why don't you put a little color in there, you know, next time? And then somebody else said, why don't you put a little color in that one? So I started to add watercolors and colored inks little by little. And, um, and then I started making paper at Hook Pottery and Paper <laughs> uh, in, in La Porte. And yep. Andrea said, well, why don't we, why don't you pigment the paper first? And then when you get it home, it'll all re already be colored in the palette that you want. And then you can put your petroglyphs and your rock art on top of that and incorporate it. And so that's what I started to do. And that's pretty much how it started. And if you go to my website, you can see, um, if you can see, uh, um, examples of my black and white pictures that I started with. And then you can also see photographs of me making paper. I've got some of that on the, on my website too. So it's, it's impossible to explain how you make paper in, in, in a size tw 31 by 22, <laughs> but cause it's, it's a, uh, it's quite a, quite an interesting process. Plus pigmenting the paper 
make it, putting the colors on it before it leaves the studio. So yeah, that's kind of a short version of. Well, that's fascinating. Tell me what um, what your website is. It's just DorothyGraden.com. Okay, and you spell Graden, G-R-A-D-E-N, right? Yes, it's very oh. easy. Yeah, and so you can see lots and lots of pictures. I, I have a lot of my artwork on there, and it and it's it's easy to follow because they're in they're in categories. So great. Yeah. Good. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing this. This is fabulous. So can you give us some examples? Can you pull up some of what it is that you're talking about so we can give people an idea? Yeah, sure. So, okay. So there is the petroglyph. Mm -hmm. You can see it? Yeah. Great. So tell us about this petroglyph. Um, these are images from a uh, from a, a an area in California, uh -huh. and the big the big one. I don't know if you can see my cursor or not, but the big one in the middle, yes, uh, is is the is supposed to be the corn maiden, and she has tools in her hands, and she is uh, basically a a fertility symbol. Uh huh. And, um, and you know we don't know for sure, but but but. Um, a lot of information gets passed down from the the tribes uh -huh. that, uh, whose ancestors actually carved these in the rocks. And where and so, was this? I'm sorry? Where was this again? In California. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I've hiked everywhere from the mm -hmm. Rio Grande all the way in, up into central Montana. And what's interesting is everywhere you go, uh, the petroglyphs and the pictographs the pictographs are painted and the petroglyphs are carved. Uh -huh. yeah. No matter where you go geographically, culturally, time-wise, they're all, they're different. They're not the same everywhere you go. There are styles that you can actually recognize uh, in different parts of the West, which is really interesting. And you see different images, like up in Montana, you see a lot of bear images. By rivers, you see a lot of a lot of birds and frogs and turtles, <laughs> and uh, and up up in uh, in um, Utah, you see a lot of deer. You know, a lot so of deer. Yeah. When you look at something like this, how does it speak to you? Talk to me about how it calls to you. Do you dream about it? Do you? What happens? You know, when I come to a site like this, that's so beautiful, and the panels are just so clear. I just sit at the site. A lot of times I'm with a friend and we'll just sit at the site for an hour or two. Uh -huh. Just 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 thinking about what it would have, what would it have been like to be back there at that time? You know, what kind of sounds would you hear? Would you hear children running around? Would you hear them pounding with their pestles, grinding up the grain, you know, and and the hunters coming back with uh with food for them and starting a fire. I mean, I've seen burnt cave ceilings where they had their fires in there. Uh -huh. and, and then and, and then they a lot of times they had dogs too. There are lots of dogs in them. And so the dogs would warn of danger and they would keep them warm at night. And so the, a lot of the a lot of the clans had had dogs. And these are actually clans. They're not tribes because these are clans that were hunter gatherers and so they traveled probably no more than 50 miles their whole entire lives some some of them wow. and they were in small groups because they had to feed their group so right. they traveled in groups from you know 11 to 15 people at the most probably and a lot of these sites face south or east because the rock is warmer on the on those sides of, so it, it, they were very practical people. <laughs> uh -huh. So this particular one is, it, is it carved? It's, or, yes, it's carved. That's we, what call, I we, we actually call it pecked. Oh, okay. There's, it's, it's a tool that, it's a tool that you can hold in your hand and then you pound, pound it because the rock is so hard that it, it they actually, ha each, each line has to be pecked into yeah. the rock yeah all right i'm going to show another one 
Okay, I think it's coming in. Oh, oh yeah, that's one of my favorite spots. <laughs> All right. Oh. Now this one, it looks to me like what you're suggesting is that the the artwork, the original artworks on the left and your maybe interpretation or something that came out of you as a result of that's on the right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So that's talk to us about that. Okay, that panel, um, the, that, the largest figure with the horns is about five feet tall. Uh-huh. And, and if you notice the panels, a lot of these interesting panels have, done, have been done so artistically because can you, know, can you see the panel, how it goes into a triangle shape? Yes. And so you see a lot of that because they were such artists that they, they compose, they, a lot of times they compose their panels to be beautiful, not only useful uh, spiritually, but also just beautiful uh, just, to, just, just to look at. And, and this, right. And this particular panel was in, is in Wyoming, one of my favorite places to go because it's, it's part of a, a wall of petroglyphs and the wall is about as long as a, a football field. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and you see you see peckings on top of peckings on top of peckings. So this particular place which was near it was a wetland area at one time. This particular place um was inhabited for 11,000 years. And so what you see, the longer you look at a panel, at first you see the most recent the most recent peckings. And then if you stand or if you go at a different time of the day, you'll see the older ones because they've been covered with a, with a patina um, because of the, the age, because of the age they're covered with. It's called desert varnish. Uh -huh. And so the older ones are fa more faded than these newer ones. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and then on the right, of course, is one of my first drawings of when I came back from Wyoming and said, I have to draw these things. <laughs> and that's why this one's black and white. Yes, it's it's one of my first ones that I decided I was just gonna have to just do it, you know? <laughs> but this is called, this this place is a, um, if you go to Wyoming, it's, um, it's a public place, but you have to be very respectful. You don't touch the rock. You know, you stay away from it. You don't touch it. It's called Legend Rock, and oh. you can any anybody can visit it, but it's you just have to be very respectful. Make sure you don't touch it because the oils in your hands can actually ruin ruin the the the, the art. So let's look at one of your more recent ones, which would be a colored one. Okay, there you go. Oh. So much yeah. more recent one, right? Yeah, I did that one last uh, last year, actually, um, and it's it's you know, my work has evolved from you know what you just saw uh, okay. in black and white, uh -huh. and, and it's it's starting to get more abstract as I've as I've been evolving <laughs> my work the past six or seven years, uh -huh. and so a lot of times I won't I won't be looking at the exact at the exact carving or the exact petroglyph anymore because I have so many of them in my head right now <laughs> that a lot of times they just come out of my head because I've been looking at them for 30 years. So uh, this is this is inspired by uh, an ancient petroglyph. That's wonderful. I then, then all the little circles and all the little pecs, all those are actually the peckings, you know, that I, the pecked images. Uh -huh. So there's lots of little dots because I see so many little, I see a lot of circles. I see a lot of uh, spirals. I see a lot of concentric circles. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. I see a lot of images that don't look like anything, but they, I'm sure they were significant at that time that uh -huh. that was done. So I incorporate a lot of what I see into like one piece of art now, instead of, Co not copying, but you know, using yeah, no, using, the, yeah. using the basic original image. I don't really use the basic original images so much anymore. That's, but you, I know you. You still go out to be inspired. 
Oh, I go every year. I, in fact, I was I, I was supposed to be there last March, <laughs> but that got canceled. I was gonna. Uh, I I have this friend who is a uh, who is a Hopi elder, and she's a friend of mine, and we go out together, and oh. we camp. We camp for two weeks, oh. um, and so we we get in her pickup truck and we drive to a site. We drive and then we hike and then camp and then drive to somewhere else and camp and hike. And so we spend two weeks out in the in the remote areas hunting for the originals. And so and so I learn a lot from her. Um, there's still a lot of things she knows that she uh, keeps quiet from me just because I'm you know I'm not Native American so I don't she doesn't share a lot with me but uh, we respect each other and we get along great and we love to camp together <laughs> and um, and has so in your work I'm sorry has she seen your work she has seen my work in fact I asked her once if it was if it insulted her you know because oh, but now you know, and she looked at me and she started to laugh and she said, your work is too artsy fartsy to insult me. <laughs> so that made me feel really good, actually. <laughs> I don't blame you at all. Can we look at another one? Sure. Oh, yeah. That, um, I see lots of that kind of an image. Um, I, I consider it a shaman, but I don't know if it is or I don't know if it is or not. And the symbolism, there's a lot of symbolism in, in my work that you can look for uh, and interpret it your own way if you want. But uh, yeah, that's that's more, it's a more contemporary looking piece, but definitely inspired by the rock art that I see out West. Wonderful. Yeah. All right, All right. let's do one more. Yeah, these, uh, these have lots of lots of symbols if you look at the far right one there's mm -hmm. like a, it looks like a flower in the chest mm -hmm. and i've been told i see that image a lot and i've been told that it represents uh stars it's the it's the the far right image yeah i'm working on it <laughs> oh okay <laughs> okay yeah that symbol right there so oh. i if you look at my work a lot you will see that symbol uh-huh um, often in my work sometimes it's hidden sometimes it's not and then the grid you see, and then you see the, the the zigzags which i see i see hundreds and hundreds of zigzags out there and then below the the right below the zigzags and also on the one on the left to the left of it there's a a dot grid uh-huh and uh the dot grids are very very prevalent in at the rock art sites and uh they were interpreted to me as being when when uh when the human mind goes into an an, an alternate state uh from um smoking hallucinogenic tobacco or from peyote or something like that that uh one of the first things that you see when you go into this uh into the state are are, are grids of dots you see dots, uh, you see zigzags, you see circles. Mm -hmm. um, they're just things that people see in their minds as soon as they go into these altered states. Right. And I, that, that one on the far left that looks like a cross, I see a yeah. lot a lot of that. Uh, it's, um, and I, I really believe that back then it was, it was part of um, honoring the four directions, uh, north, yeah. south, east, and west. Um, but I, I don't know for sure. You, you can't ever say you, you can't ever say you know for sure. It's like playing telephone for 11,000 years. <laughs> Did you ever play telephone when you were a kid? <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. right, right. So did you ever think you would be doing this? Um, you were biting? I, <laughs> I didn't think I would actually be getting shows. I've done quite a few solo shows and I have a show. Well, I had a show at the Cultural Center in Chicago last yeah. last fall, but it, it got postponed and I and the Cultural Center is still closed. So I'm not sure when I'm going to get back over there. Uh -huh. But um, I never thought I would ever actually show my work. I was just doing it for myself because the petroglyphs um, just 
they 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 reach my heart they make my heart warm and they have so much to say and even though i don't understand what they're saying i love the mystery of it the mystery of it and being with them and sitting with these ancient people's art just absolutely is it just calms me it makes me feel wonderful you know i really feel like i can almost communicate with the spirits <laughs> I, I don't know, but it, uh, that's the kind of feeling I get when I'm there. We are so grateful that you have chosen to express yourself in a way that shares all of that, both the energy and the visual with us. It's, Thank you. It's just wonderful. Thank you for your work.